Welcome back Kerry Session Jesus here. In this video, we're we'll looking at Muzz. This guy is an absolute beast. If you haven't heard of him, he's won four out of the six cash cups today. I'm looking at how he's able to W key so effectively. In this tournament alone, you can see here he's got eight average elims. He broke the world record points for the solo cash cups. So this video will help you guys perform to the best of your ability. He also had four wins throughout this. And let alone just this one performance, which is absolutely insane. He won the previous week, as you can see here. Go back two weeks, he also won this week as well. Go back another two weeks, he's also won this cash cup as well. It's absolutely insane how consistent he is. He won the last FNCS. And of course, I have got Buzz on the Masterclass. And if you guys who want to learn from him, he's going to be breaking down his early, mid game, and his end game plays on there. But this is just going to be focusing on his W King in solo at cash cups. So make sure to go check out the Masterclass, the solos one, and the Churros one. Muzz is featured on both. But let's get into these videos and breaking down how Muzz they would get eight average Elims across all ten, all, all eight games, which is absolutely insane with 63 total Elims. So right here, you're going to see a picture perfect setup from Muzz. So this is the first game of the Cash Cup. Obviously not the best lobby, so he's going to go ahead and approach this guy's 200 HP. He's boxed up in the mid game. And look how he does it. Sets up from the entire box away and make sure he covers all the angles. Most importantly, with a cone in this box here, playing from this top right hand peak. And he's going to go ahead and use his AR and rather than just pickaxe on the wall. Never, ever, ever swing on somebody's wall with your pickaxe when they're 200 HP. Think of your AR as a long range pickaxe. You can do it from a safe distance. You avoid all that risk with pre-firing and then going for just a run out edit play, which is often quite happen in these early lobbies so right here you can see he goes to the wall plays from a safe distance make sure he's got all the pieces cones the guy gets the shot and as soon as he's got that shot he places the wall and moves backwards again keeping that distance because he doesn't know anything about the guy he could be 200 hp could be 10 hp so he takes that shot whereas he's keeping spraying forward at the primal gets the Eden really safely and again not taking any damage not wasting any shield and making sure he's got a perfect setup going to the next fight you can always make sure your fights and solo cash cups are as clean as possible you're not taking too much damage so you can go into the next fight or into the next end game as stacked as possible. One thing that Muzz actually did in this cash cup compared to the last ones that I've watched with him is the fact that he's actually taking the purple tack over the purple pump. Obviously it's less damage, you don't really have that one pump potential, but the purple tack is way better if you're W-King because you can take walls and you commit into angels very quickly. So you can see right here a perfect example. This is both the guys wall, so it's one HP. Again, pressures with the AR, then he comes forward, pressures a little bit more of his AR instead of using that pickaxe again. He swaps to the purple tack since it's got a higher fire rate and more shells in it. So he swaps that, gets the cone, gets the side wall, which is really important here to stop the guy going back into his two by one. If you're approaching a two by one, make sure you look if that wall is placed in the middle or not, because you can box on it just like this. Then he commits into the angel and he wins the fight really quickly. Again, the purple tack is so strong. We'll see more examples of him using it over the purple pump later on. This is another example of just using the purple tack to actually W key. So you can see here, this guy's got a low HP wall. He does the boat strat again to break the walls. Then he comes in and starts going for the beast control, gets the box, could have got this additional wall here to force him to an angel, but instead he just takes the shot and gets the damage. Again, setting up everything with these cones below him, never really using stairs, just setting up with cones and making sure the walls here are edited so he can reset and get out if he needs to. At this point, the opponent goes up, so he doesn't overcommit, doesn't start build fighting or anything, especially in this kind of endgame situation on Force Zone. Instead, he just W keys towards the guy and waits for him to box up. This is the video I covered recently with No Riley. He's always going for these actual cones from below. So right there, he gets the cone. Now he's going to be able to force the guy down. And again, as soon as he forces him down, rather than just committing to that angel, which he probably could win, you want to try to maintain your HP. So instead, he goes for the war replace, then goes to the Mongol Classic, which still does work and it is pretty effective if you do it properly. Now, this is the point where he actually swaps out to a gold pump over the purple tack. Obviously, the gold pump can turn pump, which is probably why he prefers it compared to the purple pump. But the purple tack, I would say, is better for W King rather than the purple pump, if that makes sense. So this is what you should go ahead and do when you're actually getting W Key yourself. All the other videos in the series are basically when you're pushing teams or when you're actually pushing solos. So this is what you should go ahead and do when you're actually playing on the defensive and you've got somebody aggressing you. First thing you need to do is try to take a smart and safe counter peek. So right here, this is a good example. Just trying to do a little off angle as you're pressuring. And another thing that you should always go ahead and do is make space. Obviously in this fight, he's a little bit shambles or mats, but he still goes ahead and actually makes space. And the reason you make this space is so you can make an unorthodox counter peek, as I mentioned earlier. As so you can see here, he goes a whole lot of different boxes away, starts farming out this tree, covers everything with cones and covers all his walls off. And now he's going to go ahead and try to find a different way of peeking this guy that you might not expect. You can't just do a top right, you can't just do a straight open edit. So what you can see here, here's a really good example of this. Holds it one time with his opponent. You can see how they're committing in, how he's reading exactly what the guy is doing. And he catches him swapping off his shotgun, which is perfect tip. Gets a 140 tag, just that small counter peak where he's just moving around in his box, making the guy get a bit impatient. He gets that max damage with the green pump. And then from there, he's just really quick. Doesn't waste any time. Harpoon straight in the box, jumps as he does it, which is quite unique to get on top of the guy's ramp rather than getting underneath it. And then he's just able to get the Elim very simply. And he's able to continue on his game. 
So the biggest thing when you're getting W keyed in solos is to try to make an unorthodox counter peek and make space. So one thing that Muzz does compared to a lot of other pros is actually go ahead and use mobile builds. As you can see here, it completely changes what your builds look like and this also drastically reduces your input delay. If you play on a low-end PC, I'd really recommend this. Muzz plays on a very high-end PC, a very good PC, with a really good graphics card and really good processor, but he still uses it just because of how much it reduces your input delay. And a bunch of other pros like Sensor himself actually swap to it. So all you need to go ahead and do is just scroll down here into your advanced graphics settings or into your regular graphics settings, and then go ahead and your meshes onto low. Really simply done, you have to just make sure you're not on a game to do it. And then from there, you have these low graphics, which reduce your input delay by a large amount. Also, while we're here, make sure you guys go check out the masterclass in the description. I did a volume of Muzz, and I should have a volume coming out of Chapix on there for the Solos masterclass as well. So again, here, this is another really good example of a fight that we'll break down in a second. So basically, he gets beamed off star. Oftentimes, when you get beamed like this and the other guys, if it goes for a W key, you need to think, why are they going for a W key in these stack games? It's probably because of the loot discrepancy. So keep that in mind. They're probably not going to have the best loot, so need to try thinking about that. So right here, Muzz goes for a side jump. As he does it, goes for that close wall replace, allows him to get the full box from the opponent since they side jumped at the same time. Moves back, gets a trade tag. Now they're both quite low HP, misses his counter shot, so he only tags the guy a little bit. So they're both low HP in the situation. There's even more small amounts of damage on this guy. And at this point, he could W key forward. But you've got to think, because of the fact the guy is trying to W key him, and Muzz does have good heals in this situation to get back to 150 HP, the better play in the majority of cases like this is to just go for a heal up. Count on the fact that you're probably going to win this fight if you can get another tag on your opponent and you've probably got better heals considering you that flopper and you tag the opponent white. So you can see now he's got the advantage, he's got higher HP which will allow him to win a 50-50 in a second tier. He's going to go ahead and WQ towards this guy, get the close ramp and then actually edit through and get the far wall as well. So he gets that wall on the guy, starts pressuring from above. Another chip tag, cracks his shield, knows this is going to be a very free fight as long as he approaches it well. Raising from the wall again, keeping the distance, wanting to play with the pump versus the attack, so you can play from that long range. Gets the edit and then closes in as he does the edit. Really good movement there. And the most important thing is to always keep track of what your opponent is doing before the fight, during the fight, and then whenever the fight's coming to the close. So, right there, the guy got cracked. He's obviously going to try to go for a heal. Keep your distance, take the wall, and then close in and get the heal. One thing that Muzz is absolutely insane at is predicting his opponent. The way that you can get better at predicting your opponent, oftentimes during box fights or scenarios just like this, is actually figuring out and thinking where they're going to be able to rebox to, how can they make space, and being there ahead of time. So, right here, he's going to go ahead and get the shot on his opponent and look at the builds that he does. He gets that far wall, gets the ramp on the guy as well, and the close wall. So, you notice he's pretty much got him fully boxed. You can't go upwards. You can't go backwards so he has to either go into zone or towards zone where Maz is going to go ahead and move to immediately places the cone so the guy can't get the advantage on him or ramp him off and then he's immediately just able to get the elim man that's a perfect refresh they needed before end game just because of a good prediction play probably the best ways that you can get better at predicting your opponents especially in fortnite when it is very unpredictable is just by playing lots of solo arena and open box sites where your opponents can be boxing up in different ways Solo Arena is probably the best way just because you fight so many different players. One of the biggest strengths of Muzz and something that you really need to actually do good in cash cups is to make sure your off spawn is pretty much perfect. He never died off spawn in this cash cup and as you can see here, he basically just plays it really slowly. We cover this in the Masterclass video of Muzz that you guys should definitely check out, but his main strategy is to always make sure that he's trying to third party or be one of the last guys fighting. This means that you can obviously get a sneaky beam like he does here, or he can just third party when there's slightly shambles and he's got a lot more loot. So he plays so patient, he's been crouching and being very sneaky this entire time. Allows him to get a big beam on this guy. Gets him cracked immediately. And the big thing here when you get that damage is to not rush into the building. Even though he's got a pepper on, he still takes the time to fully piece control everything as he runs through. It's all the edits. Then he's going to go ahead and do this peak. This peak is pretty much perfect. So the first one, he chose a little bit of damage. Now he's got this massive HP advantage. But still, it's very easy to actually get headshotted. This is the perfect peak that I want these guys to be learning from. It's this bottom right hand wall thing. Okay, so after you have that massive damage advantage, Advantage. This is probably the safest peak that you can do to just get a small amount of damage on under 100 tag on your opponent It basically prevents you from getting headshotted so you can never die in this situation So do this bottom hand wall edit just like so and you can see you can see your opponent's feet perfectly But from their POV he can't see pretty much at all All they can go ahead and do is try to shoot the guy shoots the wall by mistake and the man's easily able to get the emulation It's pretty much the best that you can in that situation Especially when you've got them perched on top of a cone and you've got them full boxed as well So right here in this next engagement This is another really good example of a bunch of things that you need to do during your fighting There's a small chip tag it approaches from a whole box away and then goes to that wall replace from a safe distance As soon as he tries to go for the wall place he actually comes forward 
but having the speed boost of the pepper active whenever you're fighting is so nice because it allows you to completely get out of this guy's line of sight go for the war replace again get the conan now at this point you have to be thinking when you've got an opponent coned rather than just going straight into a peak when you're low hp think about how they can rebox how can they escape and how you can read that ahead of time so he drops down immediately goes to the war replace and gets up and now he sets up this round peak here trades again to quite low hp i'll slow this down now at this point because there's quite a few things going on First of all, goes for the mini bait immediately so he can get a little bit more HP. And realizes his opponent's actually going for a heal at the same time. So again, he does that bottom right hand peek, which is really advantageous to his position. Look at the other guy's camera angle. Because of the fact that your camera is placed on the top right behind your character, he literally is impossible to hit him, Muzz here, if he was to peek down from the low ground. Instead, Muzz plays it really patiently, realizes the guy's in a completely shambles spot, and actually just waits here for the pre fire and then eliminates him. Whenever an opponent's close to the wall like that, whenever they break it, it's actually quite hard to replace the wall unless they look upwards. So he realizes that, catches them off guard, and gets to need them. Right here, Maz gets a nice beam on this guy as he's dropping down the hill, gets that 100 tag, and starts building over him. You could keep on counter pressuring and stop this guy from healing, but most of the time when an opponent box up in a 2 bar and a metal, they are probably just going to get their minis off, so it's better to just close the distance and try to WK them before they go for a big or something. It's another chip tag as the builds are breaking, goes to this wall replace, and at this point, a lot of players have made the mistake of trying to pressure this and get the cone. Instead, what Mustaz is perfect, blocks the angle of escape from above, blocks the angle from escape from below, gets the wall up as well on both different sides so he can right peek into the guy, and completely sets up to demolish this guy if he was to try to rebox. Now, again, think about how the other guy can escape. You always have to be thinking ahead of time. This guy realizes he can't go forwards, can't go to the sides, and there's a hill over towards this other side. So he's obviously going to go backwards. Maz has already completely read that, gone ahead and got the wall. Does this really nice peek again into that angle, and you can see how powerful this is. The guy literally can't do anything there because his entire camera is in the wall, and Maz gets a really nice healing without taking any damage on a pretty decent player. Obviously, just leading with that AR beam is really nice, but everything from there in terms of the exit control was perfectly played. This is a really nice example of pressuring your opponent after you get damage on them. So right here, he gets the tag on the guy with the bow. He's going to immediately go ahead and bow the front wall now, and he could keep spraying the front wall, but the guy could obviously place a ramp and start reboxing backwards and making a lot of space. So instead, he goes ahead and drops down and shoots the floor out. As he shoots the floor out, goes for a pump shot, and this is really nice piece of control. Edits through the close wall, the guy's backwards ramping, gets the wall there to stop the guy from going forward even more, and gets the wall to the side. Now there's one motion edit, which you guys definitely need to learn, where you right click and then reset the edit in one motion, rather than doing two different resets with a scroll wheel. He does it perfectly, so he resets the wall, then he edits through in the same motion, and catches the guy completely off guard, since he got that close wall to trap him in. Really good example of pressuring when you can always try to drop out your opponent, stop them healing, and force them to box up. And oftentimes during that time, you can actually get even more damage than them since they're falling. So this is a really nice way that Muzz actually goes for a refresh coming into the end game. He needs a little bit of siphon HP, also needs some mats, and it is very nice to get a kill at this point during four zone and a more stacked lobby, just because it allows you a lot of freedom in terms of mats. You guys should be looking for these opportunities to go for kills. Again, pressures with his AR from a long distance, never even going for a pickaxe as he gets closer here, just gets all 2 HP. Takes with his AR very simply. At this point, he realizes what pieces are missing. So first of all, the cone, which he takes straight away. Then he goes through a wall break from a long distance. That's a nice wide open edit. Starts pressuring the cone again. The guy falls out and he jumps down straight into this entire setup that Maz actually has here. Really easy way of getting a refresh and he's pretty stacked going to the moving zone. He's able to get all of this shield and mats and have a really good endgame situation here to pop off with.